Hello, I'm JW, and today we have some wires, and these are actually sent in. These are horribly old. They're rubber insulated with a cotton covering on the outside. Two colours here, black and red, of course, those were the colours used at the time. And what we're going to do with these is to heat them up to an excessive temperature, basically by shoving far too much current through these, and see how these things actually burn, and most importantly, how much smoke and toxic gases are actually given off of these. Now, uh, modern cabling is generally made of PVC, which, as we've seen in previous videos, uh, when you heat that up to high temperatures, it smokes and uh, makes a horrible mess, and most of those fumes coming off are probably toxic. And you can also buy another kind of cable, which is generally called LSH or LSOH, or various other variants on the theme, and that's designed so that it doesn't give off vast amounts of toxic gases and basically fill the building with toxic smoke when you're trying to leave. So what we're going to do is compare this with the other two types and uh, see what the actual differences are. Now here's the old uh, rubber insulated cable. Now I'll tell you, this was actually sent in for this uh, particular purpose. I've uh, stripped the ends here, we'll have a look at closer look in a moment there. And so we've got two colours here, black and red. And this is the sort of thing which would have been used in either a type of conduit or possibly in those dreadful uh, wooden encasement things where you had sort of channels cut in a wooden block and a nice wooden lid to sit on the top. Date-wise, this is probably going to be from the uh, 1950s or earlier, and it could in fact be a lot earlier, so rubber cabling pretty much went out at the end of the 1950s, and certainly by the mid-60s, plastic or PVC was the standard choice. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with rubber insulation, but the main problem is that over time it dries out, and then it deteriorates, and then it crumbles away to dust. And the problem with wiring that's installed like this is that, uh, as I haven't made this type of cabling for at least 60-odd years, by now, any of this that's installed will be in a crumbling and disintegrating state. So hence, if you've got rubber wiring in your house, it really does need to be replaced. And in fact, it needed to be replaced several decades ago. Now, if you have a look at the black one, uh, first of all, you can see on the outside that it looks to be in uh, reasonably con good condition. But as you can see here, when it gets actually bent or moved, it just literally cracks. That's the insulation that's breaking away there. So again, if we break this piece here, again, it becomes very fragile and breakable extremely easily. And also this has been damaged where it was uh, removed from the installation. But uh, so the ends here we can see the cotton covering sort of fraying away there, and then the inner single core. Now on this red one here, which is one we're going to be using for the test later, we can see the inside is a solid core. It's silver in colour because it's tin plated. It is actually copper underneath. It's just got that uh, shiny tin coating on there, which uh, reduces oxidisation and it uh, probably reduces that reaction with the rubber when it's actually uh, put over the top there. Outer covering is a sort of a cotton braided type material and we can see on this end here where we've got three layers so it's the uh, inner core, the rubber insulation which is a sort of black material here and then the cotton overbraid which is red in this case and uh, the outside as you can see you can just break it off there and it just crumbles away to a uh, nasty, dusty mess, and you see it's sort of got uh, white inside, so the black may just be an extra layer over the top of that. But uh, originally this would have been nice and soft and pliable, but uh, say now it's just a uh, crumbly mess. And that's really the problem with this stuff, in that you can perfectly fine when it's sort of in the walls or whatever. And of course at any joints or terminations in this light switch or something, then as soon as anything moves slightly it just literally crumbles apart and you're left with bare wires. Now what we're going to compare it with is this one. This is a modern cable. This is actually out of a twin earth uh, type of cable. Let's remove it so we've got something near equivalent to the wire we have there. Uh, brown PVC insulation and it's just bare copper inside. Same sort of length and it's a similar size to the stuff we've got here. This will be an imperial size so we won't be getting an exact match but uh, pretty close in actual dimension. So just standard PVC. It's got that fairly sort of matte finish colouring on there. And this one happens to be brown. And then the uh, third item we're going to be using is this one. Again, this is a PVC uh, or plastic insulation, but this is the uh, low smoke and halogen variety. So this is the one that when it heats up and burns, it should not give off vast amounts of toxic smoke. Although, of course, there's probably going to be some, bearing when it's low smoke, not zero smoke. And again, this is a similar size. This is actually a stranded core, but again, it's solid uh, copper pieces, just uh, more of them. And again, it's a similar dimension to the other cable we have there. So we're going to test these three individually, and of course we're going to be doing that outside, as we don't want to be breathing in the toxic gases. Now something else we've sent in with that uh, rubber cable is this stuff, and it may look like just your normal uh, twin and earth type cable. In actual fact, this is lead-covered cable, so all of this grey material here is actually lead rather than plastic. 
and as you see it uh, remains in shape extremely easily. Now we're not going to look at this today but uh, we'll certainly have a look at this at a later time. Now I've just connected up the wire there to uh, the power supply in a rather dodgy fashion and this one is the rubber insulated variety and the current we're putting through today is in the region of about 60 amps. This is far more than this cable is intended for so it should heat up fairly quickly and the idea here is to get the cable as pretty much hot as we can without actually burning through it so then of course the insulation will have plenty of time to melt and we'll see here it's already starting to blacken and sizzle so let's just leave this and see uh, where it goes. So you see there are vast amounts of smoke pouring off of the cable there and clearly that's not going to be healthy or desirable and you can see the cable glowing red underneath there. Well you see the cable's just failed there near the end connector so obviously it's now open circuit but uh, the fact it's sort of set on fire doesn't exactly uh, make it very helpful in terms of safety. Now here's the next one, this is the PVC insulation, so we'll just connect up the power as before, and uh, same sort of length here, and it's uh, starting up with the current here at about 60 amps, but I'm actually going to turn that up to around 80 because this uh, particular one is slightly larger in size, so as our data one again, it's the same sort of glowing red temperature. So current is now up to the about 80 amps in this case, and again we'll just leave this to uh, see where it goes. So see the insulation is bubbling up and melting there, plenty of smoke starting to pour away and so we've seen PVC cable like this before so as usual it's going to smoke up and make the most appalling mess possible. So that's pretty much all burnt away and we can see again the conductor glowing uh, red there. Now I'm actually going to just disconnect this here because uh, we don't really want to wait for it to eventually melt through. And finally we've got the uh, LSH or whatever the insulation is called. So uh, as before just connect it up again. Turn the current down to about uh, 60 amps again because this is again slightly smaller than that uh, previous piece. But again that should be plenty to heat this up to a decent glowing red. Now this is one that's supposed to give off less smoke and not give off sort of toxic uh, halogen gases or whatever. So uh, let's see what happens. Now I see there's quite a bit of smoke coming off there but uh, maybe a bit less than with the other PVC variety.
though now it's increased to a uh, significant amount there so the wind is uh, flowing away what's quite interesting there though is you see the wire now is glowing red and the insulation most of it seems to have just literally fallen away from the wire rather than actually burned or melted off so uh, insulation is intact and so is the wire so they seem to have just separated somehow Now most of the smoke is cleared away and we can see there some sort of bubbling concoction going on where the wires actually are. So uh, let's just zoom in on that and have a closer look. So here we are zoomed in a bit and there's definitely some kind of liquid there bubbling away as it's heated up by the red hot wires. And again we can see the uh, insulation has sort of peeled away from the actual conductor. So most of the brown insulation is sort of still there. And it's either that or some other kind of liquid that's actually sort of just boiling away nicely there. So certainly uh, completely different to the PVC. And uh, I'll just disconnect the power there, yeah, because there's not much point in uh, keeping it going for much longer. Here's a look at the end with the power disconnected. Now we can see that most of the insulation there has just melted and basically stuck to that backing board. And uh, on the corner there, we can see there's quite a big piece of it there, which is still almost intact to pry it away with a screwdriver. So it certainly reacts in a very different way. The insulation really just seems to melt and fall off rather than burn and smoke away. And again on this curve here we can see there's the wire and then here's the insulation which has basically just fell off rather than actually burned. I mean that's almost pretty uh, intact there rather than where the wire has basically melted through the side. And it's pretty much the same all the way along the length of the wire. There's some other residues on there from previous uh, burnings in other videos. So let's look there at the uh, three types of cable, the old rubber insulated stuff, normal PVC, and the allegedly low smoke and all the rest of it stuff. And uh, certainly the rubber one made a huge amount of smoke and pollution, so certainly comparable with the PVC, in fact it might even be slightly worse, so definitely not the sort of thing you want to be breathing in. And as before, we were not standing next to it breathing in, obviously, when the thing was smoking up. Now that uh, low smoke stuff was rather bizarre because there was quite a bit of smoke given off, although it was less than the standard PVC. But what was most bizarre there, as you may have noticed in the video, was the uh, liquid which sort of oozed out of it and was basically sort of boiling on the surface while the wire glowed red hot. And this is what the end there, a lot of the insulation basically just sort of partly melted and then just fell off of the wires rather than burning away completely as with the PVC. So it's definitely a different kind of material. Whether it's any better or not is another matter, but say it's one that's supposed to not give off as much in the way of toxic fumes. So uh, it's supposed to be better for sort of public buildings and light where if there was a fire you don't want the place obviously filling it with toxic gases. But uh, that's pretty much it with the uh, three types of cable there. We'll have a look at the lead one next time, and we can't do anything outside now because, as you may hear, it's now raining. So, until next time, thanks for watching.